So the gospel reading for the ordinary form on the fifth Sunday of Lent is the gospel of the raising Lazarus from the dead, uh, which in the extraordinary form was read just a few days ago, uh, I believe on Thursday, when our Holy Father gave his uh, Urbi at Orbi message. And I spoke a little bit about it then, but I want to speak about it a little more for no other reason than the church in the ordinary form contextualizes it with two other readings, a, a short reading from the prophet Ezekiel and a short reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. And in the prophet Ezekiel, we get this vision of the Lord restoring his people, not just restoring them to their land, which is, of course, a promise that they greatly desire during their exile, but restoring them to life, uh, causing dry bones to rise and be covered in flesh again. And no, not all of that is in the short passage from the reading, the, the great vision, but the promise is there, that promise of resurrection, of opening his people's graves and having them rise from them and restoring them to their own land. And these two things go together because the, what's important about restoration of the land is also important about the eschatological vision that Israel uh, is ultimately develops in through the Lord's continuing revelation to them. Being restored to the land means being restored to the temple, being able to rebuild it, being able to worship God in the context of how he asks you to, as he, how he asks his people, how he commanded his people to, through the revelation uh, through Moses and the prophets and as it developed throughout their history. And for that same reason, it becomes very important to the Hebrew mind uh, that God will raise the dead again. Because to worship God properly, to give him everything we are, requires the fullness of who we are, body and soul. And so uh, all those physical actions uh, in the temple, the washings and the incense and the sacrifices and the sprinkling of blood and all of that, uh, all those things... That, are, uh, that, that God had given to his people to worship him, well, as the prophets will continually say leading up to the exile, they're not the only thing. It's not just a matter of checking boxes and then doing what you want. It is nonetheless important because heart, mind, and body must all go together uh, in the worship of God. And so that resurrection is important. And that's what they believe in. That's what Israel believed in. And we see that very clearly in the gospel today. When our Lord promises St. Martha that her brother will rise, that Lazarus will rise, she says, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. That in the heart of Israel, even in our, to our Lord's day, is that hope in resurrection. That the dead are not gone forever. Uh, that they will not merely be uh, shades, uh, you know, in, in, in the bosom of Abraham in Sheol, but that they will be given new life, uh, restored body and soul, so that might, they might worship God with uh, the conformance of who they are. And so in this reading, then, our God makes, uh, our Lord uh, makes one of the, the, one of the clearest claims uh, to his divinity when he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Because it is only God who has authority over life and death. It is the promise of God that his people will rise. And so our Lord saying that and then showing that by calling Lazarus forth, by using that authority to call Lazarus back to life out of the tomb, that is a way that shows that he is indeed uh, Messiah and Son of God. And why is this so important for us, especially today, right now, uh, if, existentially, if you will, in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic? Uh, because St. Paul then will take that and he will say um, that, you know, that our Lord being the Lord of life, that if we have the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, right? If that Holy Spirit that raises our Lord from the dead, that he sends upon his church after his ascension, if we have the, that same Spirit, uh, that's, you know, that if we, if we have that same Spirit of Christ, that Holy Spirit, then while our bodies may still die because of the effects of virginal sin, our bodies are still dead in sin, St. Paul will say, nonetheless, our spirits will have life, will have that divine life that is Christ by nature and given to us by grace. And if we have that, then, we, uh, we know that death is not the end, that we will indeed be restored, uh, not just uh, uh, to see God face to face as the souls of the just are in the hands of God, as wisdom says, but to one day see him face to face in the fullness of our humanity, restored body and soul. And I think now, especially in this time of, of fear, where death seems all around us, that's an important thing to hold on to. Not because fear is necessarily a bad thing, right? Uh, the kind of uh, passion of fear is a very natural reaction uh, to uh, the desire for life, which is a good, right? You know, and our Lord feels this in, the agony, his, in his agony in the garden, where, uh, you know, he asks his father that this cup might pass from him. And yet he, in, you know, is, and I think that this scene was inspired to be recorded for us, um, it's so that we could very clearly see that we still have to put other things sometimes above the life of the body. Our Lord is fully human, and he doesn't want to die on that kind of level of the passions. And yet, because 
he is fully conformed to God's will and knows what he must be done, fully conformed to the will of his Father, uh, because his human uh, mind and heart are perfectly united to that divine mind, that divine will, uh, that uh, are his uh, are his and the Father's by the, by the fact uh, that they are one God, he can overcome that very natural fear and make the choice to love to death, to love beyond that natural desire for life, but to give his life for the ransom of many. And therefore to give us that same spirit so that we might have the grace when we are afraid to not let that fear, which is, can be nat- which is natural, not let that immediate fear be a weapon the enemy uses against us to lead us into doubt and into despair but instead to cling in faith and hope to the promise of what God has given us, the promise that he uh, that was vindicated in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and the promise that, pro- uh, the promise that we too will be risen from our, ga- gra- our graves again to worship God in the fullness of who we are, body and soul. And if we allow that, um, you know, if we allow our faith and our hope to enkindle in us this love of God, uh, to help us overcome fear, uh, then we will be able uh, to uh, come out of this pandemic when uh, things return to some semblance of normal, I think with a deeper devotion, uh, you know, a deeper desire for God, a deeper desire for the sacraments, which are the ordinary means by which this divine life is given to us, and which the circumstances uh, don't let us have on a regular basis. Uh, a circumstance that for people, for example, in the global south, for Catholics in the global south, is often a day-to-day reality, but for us, at least, is only a, 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 only a, a, an exceptional moment in our normal lives. And that will then allow us uh, to, uh, to, to grow in love of God in the desire to receive the sacraments worthily, with dignity, and also then, to, as we encounter that love, to then show that love to our neighbor in works of mercy and charity, you know? And this is why the church uh, always advises us to keep death before our eyes, right? Memento mori. Because, not because we want to be morbid, but because we always recognize that we have to be prepared. Uh, you know, that's why, uh, that's why, you know, they told us in seminary, and this is, a, I think, a piece of advice given to priests down through the ages, that every Mass should be celebrated as if it were your first and your last. Because you never know. You should have that same devotion, that care that you showed the first time when it was all new and you just wanted to do it perfectly and beautifully for God, you know, that first time you did it. And you should have the same devotion you would have if you knew you were going to drop dead as soon as you gave the final blessing. Uh, Because that kind of devotion is necessary for us every day. And that should be uh, something that the reason we keep death before our eyes, that we remember death. You know, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return, as we heard at the beginning of Lent is so that we can always be prepared. We can always focus on the things that endure, the things of God. And if nothing else, the pandemic helps us do that, uh, then we may come out of it uh, certainly, um, you know, uh, spiritually richer, whatever our physical conditions may be. And spiritually richer in a way that will, I hope, encourage us uh, to love Christ and his church and the sacraments, and to love Christ and his church and our neighbor. Uh, uh, who uh, needs our help and our love and our mercy. As always, please stay safe out there. I'm remembering you in my prayers and my masses. Uh, Say an ave for me if you get the chance. And uh, always remember that God is in control.